Netflix's adaptation of the Chinese science fiction series Three Body Problem has drawn nationalistic reactions from Chinese internet users. And there's also been multiple car ramming incidents since March 19th in China, five to be exact. So we'll talk about a little bit why that is the case. Welcome to China Insider. I'm David Zhang. Chinese little pinks, nationalistic influencers, and just internet users in general are mad at Netflix because of their latest adaptation of a Chinese novel called Three Body or Three Body Problems. Their excuse for being critical of the series is because, for once, they say that the cast is too diverse, whereas the original is full of Chinese characters. And the second is that it apparently paints China in a negative light. Liu Cixin, the writer, in 2019 was actually defending the Chinese Communist Party's persecution of the Uyghurs in Xinjiang、uh, in an interview with the New Yorker, and this actually prompted to five U.S. senators writing a letter to Netflix saying that they should reconsider the adaptation. Even against that, Netflix released their adaptation on March 21st. So technically, he is a pro CCP writer, but even now he is also under attack. He sold the rights to Americans for the ne- for Netflix to adapt the series. The opening scene of episode one is what shocked everybody. However, these nationalists refuse to talk about what actually took place on、uh, in episode one、uh, or this opening five minutes because it depicts the Cultural Revolution in the 1960s. The scene is of a public struggle session at Tsinghua University in 1966. This is where one of the main characters' father is put on the. He's one of the the victims of the struggle session. Now, this is a key plot point because it completely. Was one of the motivational factors for w- what this main character would do、uh, throughout the entire series. So without this, it doesn't make sense. If you read the book, you know what I'm talking about. But here, because it depicts the Cultural Revolution, it's highlighting the CCP's cruelty, the suspension of morale and、uh, human ethics, as well as just in general the bloodshed and the amount of fear that was instilled into every single person in China during that ten years' time. Now the scene here has these people wearing the high hats, which are usually given to people who are well educated, so college professors and teachers, as they're put into the struggle session.、Uh, of course, it's a form of humiliation as well. And here the red guards、uh, start to beat them up, and the crowd here, it's a、uh, they're gathering to basically ask for the death of this traitor who they're being branded as an anti-revolutionary or as a rightist or as an imperialist or American sympathizer, etc. All these names. Now it's very good because this version, the Netflix version, actually has this scene. Whereas in the Tencent, the Chinese version, they move that to the middle of the series. So now the Western world finally gets to see on screen what the Cultural Revolution was like. However, this does not highlight the complete picture because, in my view, this is still the watered down version of what really happened. For example, one of the、uh, scene here in the first five minutes show the Red Guard after beating up the father of one of the main characters. She actually kind of hesitates a little bit. Now, this would never happen in the actual Cultural Revolution because the Red Guards were ruthless and they were known for their bloodthirsty nature and, and just、uh, the amount of brutal murder methods that were committed. Against even pregnant uh, women, uh, unborn babies, babies, etc., and so this is really like the watered down version of what really took place. And even then, that's offending the Chinese nationalists because, well, I guess in their view, there this is painting China in negative light. But we all know that what's happening in China right now is the Cultural Revolution 2.0. So on screen, there is the Cultural Revolution. Off screen, in real life, China is going through another one. Clearly, the format is different, but it's the same essence, right? It's the suspension of morale and human ethics. It's the suspension of just emotions among people, but it's actually the encouragement of people struggling against other people, pitting groups against groups, so-called different classes,、uh, different sort of social ladders, and all of these serve to benefit the CCP. Now, even the book itself already paints a much darker version of China. It's being anti-human. The fact that it is bloody, it is cruel.、Um, so I don't think the Netflix version even does that justice. Of course, that's a different type of criticism. But this is the funny and sad part, right? Those same people that are crying out that Netflix is painting China in a negative manner are the same people who wouldn't hesitate to become the radical red guards of today if they're given the chance. Look at what just recently happened in China.、Uh, everyone's putting this water and beverage brand called Nongfu Spring in a public struggle session simply because some trumped-up charges. They accuse them of using Japanese elements on their bottle branding, even though you know the same things also happen in China,、uh, or they're referencing stuff in China. So it, it's this radicalism 
uh, that's already on display here and yet they don't realize and they think that somehow Netflix is the one that's doing this. So for me, I don't really think that the nationalistic influencers are mad that Netflix is adapting the series and showing the Cultural Revolution. I think it's the fact that they're afraid that the truth about the Cultural Revolution has been revealed that they can no longer capitalize to gain benefits from it because they are the ones who seek to gain the maximum amount of benefit if things like that were to happen in China again. But I think there's also a bit of confusion for the Chinese nationalists or the Little Pinks too. This book, right, the Three Body series, is supposed to be like a national treasure. Uh, it won the Hugo Award in 2015. So it's supposed to be this proud Chinese soft power. Being adapted into the Netflix version, clearly, you know, this also contradicts their beliefs because I guess they're offended that the cast or the storyline has been changed into more of a Western version. Um, and they, are, they feel like that this is no longer them being the center of attention. And at the same time, you know, generating this whole idea of this nationalistic hate towards the Netflix version allows them to feel a little bit better about themselves because, well, they just have another thing to cry about now. But I think the painful reality for every other Chinese person is that today it is going through a different form of cultural revolution. Under Xi Jinping, you can call it the 2.0 or the cultural revolution uh, sort of like situation, but it's different. It's no longer about the, you know, physical class struggles or so on, but it's clearly it's still people against people, different groups against different groups, which is ironic considering that the current leadership, including Xi Jinping and all of the uh, top cabinet members, uh, they all come from the period of the Cultural Revolution. They lived it, yet now they want to repeat it. And it, it's the, the 10 years of the Cultural Revolution in Chinese people's hearts. It's a painful decade um, from 66 to 76. And within that period, it's harmful for the entirety of the population. So it's not like something that just randomly, you know, happened to a few people. And with that being said, simply because, you know, you want to ignore that to not allow other companies or produce production teams to portray that is a denial of the truth. It's not simply because, oh, it hurts, right? Uh, because the CCP clearly wants to censor and cover up the truth about the Cultural Revolution, how many people died. Uh, etc. And so you're not doing it justice by being mad at the fact that, oh, this is now being revealed. You should be happy. But clearly that's not their intent and purpose. So I really think that the scene, the first five minutes, produces a tenth of what really happened, the cruelty, the bloodiness, and just in general, I think the destruction of humanity. Um, but it also, I think it's reproducing some of the core ideas of the Cultural Revolution, which is destroying all aspects of religion, um, it's creating this idea of terror to control people rather than people having rule of law, right? It was the suspension of rule of law. So all of these things are important for people to know and to actually learn about. Of course, there's also other criticisms such as the cast being too diverse, a uh, story being a westernized version. Now, I don't have anything about this because I neither support Netflix's casting decision or do I support the argument that this diverse cast is somehow the problem? I simply think that from the perspective of Netflix, they probably went to the, you know, the investors meeting or, or production meeting and said that what people watch if this was a cast full of Chinese people, that would just be a Chinese movie. Um, so I, I don't know. I have no comment about that side, but I want to focus a bit more on that nationalistic perspective. The rumor is that the top internet censors have already issued direct orders to not allow the scene to be spread around Chinese social media and to essentially sh censor the entirety of the show online. Now, clearly Netflix isn't in China. And there were also rumors saying that uh, the, the top censors had contacted Netflix, telling them to delete this, but Netflix didn't comply. So of course now the show will never air in China in its full extent. So it's pretty funny. Why are they getting mad at something they can't even see without crossing the internet firewall of censorship? And uh, I guess, you know, we'll never know about their mindset. Before we continue, Blueberry Creative is having a Blossom of Spring sale going on right now. If you use my code David, you can get 15% off everything on the web store. During the sales period, which runs from March 22nd to March 31st, when you spend $150 or more, you will get a $10 gift card. If you spend $260 or more, you'll receive a box of Accelerus Pro masks. And if you spend $300 or more, you will get a $20 gift card. So if you want to support this channel, consider checking out the link in the description and check out Blueberry Creative. 
All right, now let's talk about the car ramming. Since March 19th, there's been five incidents across China where a car has driven into a crowd of people, injuring and killing people in the process. Now, on March 19th, three incidents happened on one day. Now, there's the most uh, important one or the most serious one was in Beijing, where this at nighttime, the car drove into the street filled with people. And you see in the video here, which I'll blur, uh, is full of people lying on the ground and the driver seems to be drunk according to people in the video and he gets the, the car is a crash but he gets out and he starts to argue and swear at people so clearly he's not remorseful for what he just did um, and, and there's no clear reasons as to why what, or what motivated him to do it similarly another case uh, happened in northern China this one here seems to be an accident but also again three were killed and two were injured um, one other one happened at a polytechnical college in China where a car just ran through streets of students and, and just uh, pedestrians. And then two more took place on March 22nd. On, again, one of them was in Beijing on Chang'an Street, which is a very important street because some of the, uh, like Zhongnanhai, like the headquarters of the CCP are on the same street. So this is very interesting. Uh, car ramming is quite common in China, but it's never as common as it's so frequent that we have five cases in you know a week or so of time. And so these type of disasters are getting more frequent. Since the new year started, we've covered so many disasters and miseries, right? We had explosions. Uh, we had a murderer that took the lives of five families in his village. We had the case of the three kids, 13 year olds who murdered their classmate. Uh, we have the car rammings now. So something really, really wrong is fundamentally taking place in China and we have no idea what but we just know that the pressure is mounting and it's starting to reflect from the bottom up. And so there's just a frequency, the amount of this, like miseries and just, in fact, innocent people have to die for this, right? A lot of times it's because of social retaliation. Um, they wouldn't go retaliate against the government, but they would do so by taking the lives of innocent people. The fact is China today, you, you, you have to use your real name when you buy a cleaver. Uh, scissors are chained up, cleavers are chained up. You're not allowed to own any guns, but yet still you have so many cases of murder happening with a car, with a cleaver, etc. And so these measures don't really stop crime, uh, but these crimes are not just pointed. They're like pointless, right? They're just blatantly murdering innocent people. And that's the state of China today. All right, if you enjoy the content today, make sure to leave a like, comment below your thoughts, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, I'm David Zhang. This is China Insider. Bye-bye.